hi guys. Hi, I hello, hope everyone is doing okay. Um, and I hope I make it if it's a 15 minute um, kind of timeline here. I thought, can you hear me okay? Okay, good. Um, I thought before we get started, I give just a little bit of context on my background um, and a quick snapshot on Groupon for those of you not tracking along with the business. So this is kind of a fun visual um, that reflects my past 22 years of professional experience and some personal experience in there as well. I actually started my career as an outside sales rep, um, literally selling long distance door to door to businesses. And I realized very early on that I loved talking to people and I loved learning about their business, but I hated cold calling. So I was able to parlay that into a couple different admissions jobs. Um, am I not on? Okay, sorry. Um, thank you. I parlayed that into a couple different admissions jobs, um, which is essentially educational sales, right? Um, and then landed in a technical recruiting job, which eventually um, pushed me out to head up HR for a local startup in Chicago called Hubbard One. Um, and that's frankly where I fell in love with the startup world, right? I love the energy and the pace and the craziness that comes with being in a startup. Um, we grew the business for about four years from about 20 employees to just over 100, sold the business to Thomson Reuters, um, and I stuck along for or stuck around rather for another eight years, um, got married, had a dog and a couple kids through that time, um, and eventually looked down at my watch and realized I needed a new, I needed a new <laughs> experience. Um, that's kind of annoying. Hold on, I'll, I'll just hang it up here. Um, Okay, so I landed that group on the first time around um, in 2012, um, had a lot of fun and um, got tapped in the shoulder to run HR for the Museum of Science and Industry, um, which is also an amazing cultural institution in Chicago. Did that for two and a half years um, and then ended up rejoining Groupon um, back in November of 2015. Okay, quick snapshot on Groupon. Um, you certainly know us, you know our brand, um, but I thought I'd just give you a little bit more details on actually the business. Um, we're about 8,000 employees across 17 countries. Important to note, um, when I joined the first time, we were a little bit larger than 8,000, um, but we were across 48 countries, which is kind of crazy and remarkable. Um, we've spent a lot of time over the past several years kind of streamlining and simplifying the business, um, shrinking our footprint, footprint um, and really focusing in on the markets where we can win. The majority of our headcount is in sales um, and then kind of operations or customer service and then obviously technology. We've hired, um, or I should say, um, our 80 plus strong of recruiters who are many of whom are here today, thank you for being here, um, works tirelessly literally every day, probably 24 hours a day in hiring close to 3,500 to 4,000 employees a year. Kudos to you guys. Um, so I'm going to spend the next probably 10 or 12 minutes talking about um, kind of sourcing the best talent. But before we get started, I thought I would share just a quick definition just so we're on the same page. This one is just taken from Sherm. Sourcing is the proactive searching for qualified job candidates for current or planned open positions. It is not the reactive function of reviewing resumes and applications sent to a company. In order to understand kind of where sourcing fits in the talent acquisition landscape, um, I also thought it might be nice to kind of reflect on the actual evolution of our field. Um, some of you guys might remember, this is decades and decades ago, um, but the function was a staffing function, right? And there were individual people, recruiters, that used their personal Rolodexes, people are nodding along, um, to help find unemployed people jobs. Um, and that evolved, obviously, in the 80s and the 90s, and technology came and really revolutionized the function. Um, Applicant tracking systems became, you know, recruiters' best friends. Online job postings um, made, you know, millions, it seems like, jobs available um, to all the applicants that were looking. Um, and now we're today um, in, a, in, a, in a world where people oftentimes reflect on our function as talent acquisition. Um, we focus a lot on passive candidates, and there are frankly new uh, sort of recruitment technology companies popping up every day, many of whom are here today. So as our function sort of becomes more data-driven and strategic, I would say strategic sourcing has actually become a little bit more of a science than an art. I think the best recruiters that I know and that most of you know do a really efficient job of balancing both. Um, but as I reflect on my kind of past 20 years of experience and reflect on the kind of changing landscape of our industry, um, I've kind of come up with a top five list of sourcing strategies. And I'll spend just a minute on each. Um, one, establish an employment brand. Two, embrace diversity. Three, invest in tools and technology. Four, leverage your employees. And five, always be hiring. 
Number one, establish an employment brand. You just heard Mike talk about it. Wonderful, all the things that he said, do that, right? Um, but no, seriously, know who you are. Know who you are internally from your employee's perspective. Know what candidates and the market perceives you as. Um, you may need to differentiate um, kind of your different employee value propositions. When I've worked for smaller businesses, we had one and it was awesome and we could all rally around it. At Groupon, we're pretty complex um, and we've had to kind of develop a couple different EVPs. Um, protect it seems pretty obvious, but I will tell you from experience, once you tarnish your brand, it is very hard to kind of buff that out, right? Um, we do a couple things very deliberately at Groupon. Internally, we have launched um, a monthly poll survey, literally, monthly. We send a couple questions out to 8,000 employees and we collect a ton of feedback, good, bad, and otherwise. Um, but we kind of mine through that, our leaders mine through that, and really try to take action on what people are telling us. Um, we do exit interviews with every single person that leaves, which is a lot. Um, and we also really take a deliberate view of you know, Glassdoor and other areas that you can actually find real-time information um, from your employees and former employees. Um, quick, quick story, back in the late 90s when I was at that company, Hubbard One, um, and the war for talent was real. We were a tiny little startup um, and it was very hard to kind of attract talent. So we got together and we tried to hone in on like the perfect blueprint of the employee that would be successful at Hubbard. Um, we ended up, you know, uh, landing with this it's kind of silly, it sounds a little bit silly now, but a silly tagline, right? Smart, high bandwidth driven. And we took a lot of time to define exactly what that meant and what that looked like at Hubbard. Um, honestly, that became kind of the fuel for our hiring engine. Um, it, we had a lot of fun with it and it really allowed us to hire a lot of great talent in that space. Okay, two, embrace diversity. Diversity recruiting is not just the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. And if you haven't gotten that memo, hopefully you're hearing that loud and clear from me today. Um, I'm really proud to be part of a company like Groupon who literally embraces diversity kind of at its core. Um, also, if you work at a company or represent a company that has employees in Chicago, um, there's really no excuse. There's no better place to focus in diversity than Chicago. Um, our city is so rich in ethnicity and kind of cultural diversity that there are lots of opportunities to get involved. Groupon's focused in a couple big areas. Um, you can focus in a lot of different ways and we decided to focus in three. Women in technology, women in leadership, and ethnicity overall. Um, we've been really active in the women in technology era. Um, we have sponsored events, big events like Grace Hopper, which is an annual convention, I think the largest um, gathering of female technologists in the world. Last year there was 15,000 that met up in Houston. Um, we were proud to be a sponsor, but we also find ways to get involved and support kind of local, smaller efforts. Um, we've hosted Girl Geek dinners in Palo Alto, um, sponsored XXUX happy hours. There's a lot of different ways that you guys can get involved. Um, last year also in Chicago, we did um, and rather made a very deliberate attempt to increase our, our numbers of underrepresented um, ethnic groups in our customer service um, department. Um, we partnered with the business to understand who, where are the communities and where are the um, organizations that we could be partnering with, with, with to extend our brand. Um, we reevaluated our job descriptions to make sure we weren't inadvertently, um, you know, mining out certain qualified, otherwise qualified people. We trained all of our recruiters um, and all of our hiring managers in unconscious bias training. Um, and we literally scrutinized the pipeline and the funnel to understand where people were falling out, literally every step, every two weeks. That resulted in a significant increase in diversity um, in the last big three CS start classes. Um, additionally, those classes had the lowest no-show rates and the highest, well, maybe tied for highest, um, training test scores. So not only did we increase the number of diversity hires, but we also raised the bar in terms of the quality of our talent. Okay, next, three, invest in tools and technology. I presume everyone in here is leveraging LinkedIn. Um, you have to, and you should, right? And I will remind you, it is, is very expensive. So make sure you're getting the most, the most out of your tool um, and your um, kind of membership and partnership. A um, couple of things that we've done at Groupon. Um, we are in very close partnership with our account management team. I mean, we leverage the heck out of these guys. They have involved us in their kind of future roadmap, um, early beta and partnership programs. Um, we've leveraged them for market data on different cities and new roles. Um, we have also leaned on their branding and diversity experts, um, and they truly are experts in their field, but I would encourage you to seek, seek those folks out on your team. Internally, our EMEA HR, or rather EMEA recruitment team, um, pulled together the EMEA, HR, the EMEA leadership team um, last year and did a workshop, plain and simple, like a LinkedIn workshop, and it taught some of the leaders how to enhance their profiles, um, you know, kind of post and share jobs, and frankly, just keep their, active, uh, their networks active. 
Um, the last thing uh, which is important, I'm going to take a little bit of a deeper dive, is, is focus on predictive analytics. Um, you know, it's uh, sourcing tools and the millions of them that are popping up every day um, have done a really great job to kind of further what we're doing and how we're focusing um, on predictive analytics in, in the sourcing industry. A friend of mine says and uses the motto, reminds his recruiter friends, be a scientist, not a hero. Predictive analytics is the use of data, statistical algorithms, and machine learning techniques to identify the likelihood of future outcomes um, based on historical data. So what does that mean kind of in the strategic sourcing world? I'll give you an example. Um, two former colleagues of, of ours, um, John Hundreiser and Elliot Garm, started a, a technology recruitment business um, where they are helping kind of people invest in um, and finding the right candidates that are looking for the jobs right now, right? So their tool leverages public data to predict what people want to switch jobs right now by analyzing things like social media, work history, and overall company information. Um, answering questions, you can see a couple I threw up there. You know, how long have they stayed at their previous jobs? How long have they been at their current job? Do they have a personal website? Have they recently uploaded or made any kind of edits uh, to that site? Um, how do they use social media? Have they recently deleted projects from GitHub or followed a bazillion more people on Twitter? Um, from a company perspective, when's their company paying bonuses? How's their stock doing? Um, what's their stock vesting cycle? Um, are people leaving or joining that company? Um, they compile these kind of clues or answers to these questions, kind of crunch the data and prior prioritize those most likely to leave. So if you're a recruiter and you search and it comes up with literally 700 people, um, it's a matter of like, where the hell do you start? Where the heck do you start, sorry. Um, so this allows a recruiter to really sharpen their focus and prioritize those who are most likely and willing to leave. Number four, leverage your employees. Um, your employees are your greatest assets. I think a couple folks that, that have gone before me have stressed this. Um, technology and systems and tools are awesome, but don't forget about your people, in particular, your hiring managers. Um, they, I guarantee you, if you ask and lean on your hiring manager, just managers to send a LinkedIn, in, LinkedIn email or to reach out directly to a candidate, you will get a better response. Um, sourcing is a team sport, right? Um, it is Im incredibly important not only to lean on your hiring managers, but make sure your entire leadership and employee base is involved. Referral programs um, and campaigns are also kind of a great way to boost momentum and drive networking efforts. Um, one example that we've done at Groupon um, is partake in at what's called Geek Fest, if those of you guys know. It's a weekly meetup of um, self-proclaimed software development geeks, and we host it at Groupon. Um, it's a great kind of, uh, it's a great way for us to get a little exposure, and frankly, for a lot of our technologists to get, um, to get in touch and network with lots of other great technologists in the area. Lastly, always be hiring, um, and I swear such and I didn't align our presentations earlier, um, but to kind of steal a rallying cry from Glenn Gary, Glenn, Gra Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross, um, really, always be hiring, never shut off your hiring engine. Um, it is so important. You may need to adjust for kind of priority um, and investment levels, but don't ever turn off that spigot. Um, budget for unplanned additional talent. I guarantee you your finance folks insert lots of plugs in the budget, insert a talent plug so that when you find that awesome next superstar, you actually have the dollars um, to be able to hire that person. Focus on early pipelines for talent, both college, I'd say, and high school. Um, there are great colleges and universities right in our backyard. The University of Chicago um, Metcalf internship program, if you are not familiar, check it out. They place 2,000 um, college students at local Chicago companies. Um, there's also a great local, uh, local organization called Genesis Works that partners up um, companies and high school students for kind of work study um, and experience. Our university recruitment team has done such an amazing job um, of bringing in terrific interns. Um, they've actually created a Groupon University intern blog. Um, here's a quick snapshot of that, where they ask current interns to kind of blog about their experience. It's great exposure for the intern, um, but it also allows us to kind of promote kind of future opportunities at Groupon. So in sum, um, look, sourcing, strategic sourcing is, is not rocket science but there's also no silver bullet. Um, I think if you focus on these five things, they'll begin to kind of work together to fuel an efficient and healthy and sustainable hiring engine, which frankly, every company is going to need to compete, survive, and win in this market. Thanks. <laughs>